Hi friends! Ever wonder if your tap water is really safe? Now if you live in Switzerland, supposedly you have one of the safest drinking water on earth. Really? This is chlorine. See, there's chlorine in it. There's some fluoride. Well, I don't know, maybe it's closer to zero. Ceramic acid, zero. Chlorine dioxide, fan, apolonity. Past the pHs, and then it's kind of spotty. When I visit Switzerland, I still brought a portable water filter that filters out what most filters don't microplastics. Drinking bottled water, even if stored in glass, is not microplastic free either. And you probably think I'm making a big deal about nothing. Well, Microplastics have been found in the brains of people with dementia and in the hearts of people with plaque. And some people think we are eating a credit card's worth of plastic. And within just a few seconds, I basically increased the microplastics in this water bottle. So the best water is the one with the least microplastics. And in this video, you will learn how to reduce your microplastics, which we all have been ignoring. I mean, water literally makes up 71% of the Earth's surface, and there is over 71% of water in your own body. But this isn't just a story of risk. It's one of resilience. Because once you understand where microplastics are hiding and how they get in your body, you can take real practical steps to reduce your exposure and protect yourself and your family from these microplastics. This is about empowering you, not scaring you. And let's face it, there is no getting rid of plastic, even if you went to live in the remote jungles of the Amazon or even the ice sheets of the Arctic. Our air, our water, they've already been polluted with plastics. And specifically, it's microplastics, which are plastic fragments that are smaller than five millimeters. Now, centimeter is a top segment of my little pinky. I have really small fingers. But microplastics can be naked to the eye. And they're everywhere in oceans, in our rivers, soil, rain, air, Arctic snow. And yes, it's also inside your body and my body. And in the 1960s, scientists actually warned the U.S. government of plastic pollution, this catastrophe. And what was their collective response? was similar to how politicians embrace social media. They simply ignored it. Now, everything is made out of plastic. Your car, your water pipes, your cooking spatulas, food storage material, and even your clothes. What did people do? Well, they started a fake recycling program where we got every little kindergartner to go home and encourage their parents to recycle. Remember how you were supposed to look for the number on the bottom so that you would know if it's recyclable or not. And despite all your hard work and all the coins you earn from recycling water bottles, only about 5-9% to 9 of plastics in the United States are actually recycled. Primarily plastic number one and plastic number two. They are the most commonly recycled but oftentimes they are downcycled into lower quality plastics. Plastics, number three to seven, they rarely get recycled and they just end up in landfills or they're incinerated. And less than 5% of plastics are actually turned into new things. So what happens to the plastics that you aren't disposing of? Well, about a million tons of plastics are exported to China every year or they're burned in the state of Utah. And what happens to the ones that don't burn? Well, they break apart into microplastics that eventually leach into bodies of water, streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans. Even the Arctic has microplastics. So what's wrong with plastic pollution? Well, it takes a long time to break down from heat to sun and friction. But the thing is, they just simply break apart into smaller sizes to pollute the air, the water, and the soil. They don't actually break down. So the big plastics are called megaplastics, like your grocery bags. They're basically dumped in the oceans, and they're commonly ingested by poor sea turtles, confusing them with jellyfish. Yeah, those turtles don't make it if they eat bags of plastic. Megaplastics will break apart into microplastics. And then that breaks into smaller pieces called nanoplastics. Nanoplastics and microplastics, they're ingested by crustaceans as well as fish. And all that plastic waste eventually collects in the bottom of the ocean. Bottom feeders 
They have more plastic than the ones that swim up on top. And when you eat these animals, they enter into your body. Okay, so maybe you don't eat seafood, but guess what? There's also plastic in your meat. And if you like sugar or honey, sea salt, beer and milk have plastic too. We all never really truly appreciated how plastics would change our health because I think we were all in awe of its flexibility, its versatility. My mom used to show me how to freeze these plastic water bottles so that I could get a cold, refreshing drink at school. And I did that. And you know, some people, they actually microwave plastic, but heat will make it leach more chemicals. During college, one of my friends decided to use a plastic container to heat up water, like a Tupperware container. He did it all the time with his food in the microwave and it worked perfectly. Well, instead of the microwave, he actually directly put that plastic container filled with water over a Bunsen burner. If you've ever played with the Bunsen burner in chemistry lab, that basically lights up a flame. So guess what happened to the container? It basically melted in the center and all that water spilled right through the hole. At the time, it was so funny. I laughed at how ignorant he was that he didn't know that plastic would literally melt with direct contact with fire. However, we've all been ignorant. These microplastics and nanoplastics have basically secretly been mixing in with our water, our food, plastic wrap, plastic bags, plastic water bottles. If you eat any processed foods, well, there's probably plastic in that too. Most of us consume about 39,000 to 52,000 microplastic particles every year. It's not just through food and water, you also inhale some of that. Definitely, if you live next to lots of cars and industry, you get more plastic in your air. It's so bad that some people claim we're eating a credit card's worth of plastic every day. These tiny particles are now in our bodies, in our lungs, in our liver, in our brain. They're even in the cerebral spinal fluid. And they're not just passing through, they're literally staying, accumulating, and interacting with your immunity and your gut microbiome. So if you have problems digesting your food, microplastics inhibit digestive enzymes. It decreases the mucus lining that protects you from your gut microbes, and they change too. Once you get microplastics in your body, they cross the blood-brain barrier. That means they enter into your brain. Could plastic be contributing to our rising dementia rates or even to our mental health crisis? I don't know, but I'm sure it just doesn't help. We are finding plastic in the plaque and coronary arteries. And could they be making the plaque less stable to increase heart attacks? It may be like the foundation of your house. What if that cement foundation was partially made out of plastic? You think that'll survive a tornado? Okay, so now that you realize we're becoming plasticized from just the water that you're drinking, what can you do about it? There are lots to do. First of all, you know, if you don't have to use this plastic water bottle, then you really should avoid it, right? Bottled water is a major source, and one city found that an average liter contained about 240,000 tiny plastic fragments, 90% of which were nanoplastics, so they are invisible to your eye. Now, recently I took my son on a shopping trip to Costco to stock up for his apartment, and he wanted to buy sparkling water. So I actually suggested that he not pick plastic and pick a glass bottle instead. But then when I was researching for this video, I actually learned that glass bottles could potentially have more plastic than the plastic bottles. Now, how does this make sense? Well, it's because of the cap. This bottle cap is made out of plastics and the microplastics found in a glass bottle basically have the same color as a paint that was in the outer layers of the cap. Now, however, to be fair, other studies have shown that you actually get more microplastics when you drink water from a plastic water bottle as opposed to a glass one. So really, which is it? Well, I decided I actually needed to find a study to tell me specific brands. You know, I want specific brands tested. So I found this study that tested a number of different companies and San Pellegrino had some of the lowest amounts of plastic. So that's the bottle I told them to go buy. Hi friends, I am so thrilled that you wanna take charge of your health and take charge of your food. Now I know nutrition can be complex, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm here to support you in this lifelong journey. So if you point your camera app to this 
QR code, it'll take you to a link for a free handout that I created just for you. And if you like it, if you want to see other handouts, please go to the link in my show notes and then you can leave me your feedback on what I could do to help you in your journey. Okay, back to the video now. But no matter what water bottle you're drinking from, you should be aware that simply by screwing on and off will add more nano and microplastics to your water bottle. And if you manipulate it by squeezing and playing with your water bottle, you will add more microplastics to your water as well. I used to leave my plastic water bottle in a car just in case it was an emergency, right? I would have water. And when I would drink that thing, oh my gosh, it would taste really plasticky. And that's because heat will make these chemicals leach and you will taste more microplastics. God. That is so gross. So don't leave your water bottle in a hot car. Don't keep playing with the cap on and off. You know, once you take it off, I wouldn't put it back on. And if you decide to refill it with tap water, well, your tap water has plastic too. And this is especially true if you use PVC pipes. The reality is we have to use some kind of piping, right? We don't want to go back to Pompeii, Italy and be using lead pipes for our plumbing. Flint, Michigan reminded us of that. And copper pipes? Well, copper has its own problems. You don't want to cook on copper and you really don't want to drink any more copper than you need to, right? It's an essential element, but it has a very, very slim range of toxicity. You can get too much copper quite easily, and that could potentially be detrimental for your brain as well. However, now I decided that whether it's tap water or bottled water, I want to remove the microplastics in that water. So before I drink any water, I will basically filter it. And yes, ironically, I filter it with a plastic filter and it stores in a plastic water container. And this is where knowing the type of plastic can make a difference. Okay, if you flip your plastic container around, you'll find a number. The number here is, I think, a number one. For most of the time, it's number one. The cap, though, I couldn't find the number. It's usually number two or number five. And in general, you'll find a number one to number seven. Number one is made out of polyethylene terephthalate, and it is known to leach antimony, which is a natural metalloid found in flame retardants, again, plastics, batteries, bullets, and other metal alloys, and it's even in dirt. It's also known to be in cosmetics, especially from Asia. Now, antimony is actually used to treat parasitic infections like leishmaniasis and schistosomiasis. You may not have heard of these infections. Leishmaniasis are found in every continent except North America and Australia. It's transmitted through the bite of a female sandfly, or occasionally people can get it through blood transfusions, sharing needles, or the mom can pass it along to the fetus during pregnancy. And this is another reason why I don't like flies, especially ones that bite. Schistosomiasis is a water parasite, so if you swim in stagnant water, or if you just stand in it, then that parasite will bite you and then it will literally pierce your skin, go into your blood vessels, use those things like a train track and get to different parts of your body. So these infections, they're very, very serious. And serious infections, need serious medications to treat them. And tenamine-based drugs are serious medications. And you can imagine that if you take too much antinomy, it has side effects. It includes abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. But it can also affect how your heart beats. It can affect your blood pressure. And it also can affect your liver, how it detoxes. Now, to be clear, normal water bottle storage and usage probably doesn't really leach much atinomy at all. But once you add heat, let's say you microwave this, or you pour hot water in it, or you let this sit in a super hot car, well, you will have more atinomy leaching out. And I guarantee there's someone out there recycling these water bottles and pouring hot water in just maybe to sterilize it or something. And number two is a high density polyethylene plastic. And those plastics are used for milk jugs, detergent bottles, juice containers, and grocery bags. Grocery bags are bad for sea turtles, but they can be recycled into toys and water pipes. They are considered safe to use, and that's why people made them into cutting boards. Now think about it. Do you really want to be cutting fragments of plastic by chopping your food? 
Now, number three is polyvinyl chloride is used to make cling wrap, pipes, food packaging, some toys. Heard of the Ohio train derailment? That released a boatload of chemicals, including vinyl chloride, which is a known carcinogen. Number four is low density polyethylene that's used in plastic bags, your bread bags, your six pack rings for cans and squeezable bottles. These are simply not recycled. Number five is polypropylene, like Tupperware, it makes yogurt containers, straws, bottle caps, soups, diapers. They are also not recycled. It is considered one of the safest plastics for food use, and supposedly it's okay under normal use. Number six is polystyrene, is used for disposable coffee cups, food storage container, and cutlery, as well as foam packaging. It's supposed to be recycled, but it really isn't. Polystyrene is a neurotoxin and potentially can be harmful to your liver, your kidneys, and stomach. Remember, plastic is an oil-based product, so when you store oily, fatty foods, it may leach more into your food. That can be stored in your body fat over time. This may build up into high levels. I would personally avoid styrofoam. And yet I'm not cutting with plastic knives anymore. And number seven are basically other types of plastic products. Some contain BPA. And you can find this in polycarbonate water bottles, baby bottles, especially the older ones, some reusable food containers, epoxy lining in the cans. And what's the problem? Well, BPA is a known endocrine disruptor and mimics estrogen. It allows it to bind to estrogen receptors as well as androgen and thyroid hormone receptors. And hence, it can interfere with hormonal signaling and gene expression. It's been associated to reduce sperm quality and motility. BPA was detected in 89% of urine samples, and experimental studies have suggested that it can also reduce fertility in women. It's associated with higher obesity rates, higher insulin resistance, and higher rates of type 2 diabetes. And could it be increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease? I mean, really, whatever plastic you use, you just have to keep some core principles in mind. The temperature does change how much plastic or its chemicals will leach in your food. Now, some people don't like water and they may like drinking tea. Well, tea bags are made out of nylon or polypropylene that can release billions of nanoparticles of plastic into a cup. And if your cup is plastic, well, that can release more plastic too. Studies have shown that plastic containers significantly release more microplastics when the temperature elevated compared to room temperature. And shaking your bottle worsens this effect. And if you put fat, acid, or hot stuff in plastic containers, even food grade, well, potentially, it may leach more stuff out of the plastic. That means don't microwave your leftovers in plastic. And when you buy dressings, when you squeeze it from that plastic, don't you think you're getting some plastic out with every teaspoon? And everybody understands that microplastics can potentially leach into liquids. But there's actually another large source that so many people are forgetting, processed foods. The more you eat food that's pre-processed, chopping, packaging it, they use conveyor belts, they use plastic equipment, and it's even maybe in the air in the food processing plants. These all can contaminate your food with plastics. And studies show that highly processed proteins like chicken nuggets and breaded shrimp they contain more microplastics than their counterparts. In fact, people consuming the average U.S. protein products, they actually make just 11,000 microplastics per year, with a potential upper range of 3.8 million. Now, I've gotten rid of plastic food storage containers, and I've converted to glass to store any hot food or watery foods. I always avoid microwaving with any kind of plastic. I only drink filtered tap water instead of bottled, and I skip now the synthetic tea bags. It's important to choose whole, minimally processed foods when you're looking for foods. And don't forget to dust and vacuum regularly with HEPA filters because there is plastic in the air. Now, you don't need to be perfect. Even small changes help. You're not just reducing your exposure, you're actually lowering your risk for inflammation, hormone disruption, and even may help preserve your cognitive abilities. And your everyday decisions could be just skipping water and water bottles or changing how you microwave leftovers or store your lunch. But the reality is if you only focus on plastic and you don't upgrade your food quality, then you're unlikely to change your metabolic health. And if you wanna know how to best upgrade for a healthy metabolism, check out the next video.